Welcome to the Making Place exhibition. It was put together to celebrate and share three years of the Making Place programme, which is our long-term programme working with local communities, artists and designers in the local areas of Radford and Lenton. The projects that have been part of the Making Place programme have explored different issues that affect our neighbourhoods and our lives and the spaces that we inhabit. Through these projects, we've worked with dozens of artists, many different community organisations and hundreds of participants. So we want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been involved so far. This exhibition gathers together material from all of the different projects and creates a kind of collage with many layers of images, text, sound and video. As a socially engaged and publicly cited programme, there's no way that we could bring everything into an exhibition format. So the exhibition instead offers you fragments from all the projects and hopefully a way into getting a flavour of the projects that have happened. It also brings together material that has not been seen together before. So it brings things into conversation and creates new connections and meaning between these projects that have happened over a three year time period and across many different locations in the neighbourhood. Running through the exhibition, the soundscape includes excerpts of voices and more abstract sounds that come on intermittently. The soundscape for the Making Place exhibition uh, was a seven hour long soundscape that lasts throughout the whole exhibition. Um, so from the morning when the building opens to the late evening. There was a wide range of voices and field recordings and pieces of music which were there to complement and accompany the exhibition. My father used to work there, right, you know, and um, it was like looking for a job at the time. But job was then easy to get, right, you know, so um, if I didn't really sort of get one at Rally, I would have got some one somewhere else. For the simple reason, it's nothing to compare with what it is now. The soundscape really paints a picture of the depth and the richness of Bradford and Lenton and represents that in sound, which is really interesting. The voices from the different projects really animate and bring forward the histories and the, the depth of the histories, which kind of all coexist in this complicated way and, and a meaningful way. And they inform us about our lives today and they give us information about who we are um, and about how that reflects, you know, where we're, where we're going as a, uh, as um, you know, a community or as individuals within a community as well. I was born in Lenton on Balfour Road, um, I don't know if you know, that's near Il Ilkeston Road, in 1982. I remember the corner shop on the bottom of my road, um, there used to be a paper shop. Um, and then I went to Douglas Nursery just after my third birthday. Um, Inside the structure, you'll see a series of projections featuring portraits from projects that recorded local histories, documenting aspects of local heritage that are less visible. The portraits appear at randomised positions and timings so that you'll meet a different combination of people depending when you enter the space and how long you spend there. This set of portraits are photographs taken by Vanley Burke as part of When We Worked at Raleigh, a project led by Nottingham Black Archive. When We Worked at Raleigh documents the experiences of members of the Windrush generation and their descendants who worked for Raleigh Industries in Lenton from the 1950s to the 1980s. Over the course of the project, Nottingham Black Archive collected oral histories documenting arrival and day-to-day -day experiences and contributions to challenging racism and increasing workplace equality in one of Nottingham's most famous industries. It used to be on the tire fitting, but then it get too heavy for me, and I, they put me in another the shop where they do 
import and export. Uh, what's that called? Sturmy Archer. Sturmy Archer. The import and export. And that's where I work until I left. 1981. Photographer Ben Harriet worked with gardeners from Radford's Mill allotments, some of whom have been working this patch of land for over 50 years. I must have started in the 60s, coming down on my own, well, with my dad. And then we got, we got married in two years before, and it took off from there. We still come down, but, um, but as I say, we, we try and get down three times during the summer because of watering. In 2018, an exhibition, Meal and Walk, led by artist Jagdish Patel, brought together stories from the South Asian diaspora through photography and archival material, focusing on people who'd settled in Nottingham and used their activism to challenge everyday racism in the city. Jagdish worked with elders to gather stories, archive material, and make this series of portraits. This, this place where Primary is, is the heart of where the early migrants who came here in the 40s, 50s and 60s lived. Um, it was the heart of the, not just the Asian community but the black community as well. And what we have wanted to do with the project is it's partly about uncovering but it's about unsilencing because there's a whole collection of stories and a whole collection of stories of how people lived and the infrastructure they built up in terms of um, supplementary schools, in terms of activism, in terms of uh, help with welfare. That, that was located in informal places around here. So people would meet in the pubs, they would meet in the parks, they would meet in factories. And um, so, and we talk about it in our own communities, but we've never, not really talked about it more broadly, and a lot of the younger generation don't know about it. So this project was really as much about uncovering as it was about unsilencing. And a big part of the project was talking, talking across generations and across communities. So we, we had walks where people talked and told stories. We had meals where people walked and told stories. We had a couple of meetings. And um, it was more about people learning from the generation who were here, exactly what did go on, how it went on. Designer Barbak Kashemi Nezad collaborated with local residents to explore the question, what is Lentonness? The responses gathered so far feature in a public artwork that takes the form of an LED sign. This combined definition of the neighbourhood includes a growing list of experiences, observations and characteristics collected from across Lenton. The sign was installed on the side of the Savoy Cinema in 2019 and is now relocated to the Crocus Cafe on Lenton Boulevard. The different definitions give a rich picture of the many things that Lenten means to local people. From long-term residents, elders and children, to new communities and students, at a time when the neighbourhood has undergone significant change. They offer snapshots of place, memories, humour, poetry, loss and hope. Artist Chiara Dell'Erba invited pupils at Edna Geolds Academy to map their locality, reimagining the area from the perspective of plants. Through a series of workshops, they created the Chimera Plantarium, a visual imaginative archive where human and non-human forms come together as hybrids, half plant and half human. The result of their collaborative process became material for a new public artwork for Church Street that was launched in October 2019. The Chimera Plantarium um, started as uh, a response to a public art commission um, between Primary and Nottingham City Council. Um, it's called Chimera Plantarium because I was looking at uh, how we can uh, enhance um, the relationship between human beings and multi-species. So I was looking at what kind of creature and what kind of relationship we can create within a sort of hybrid uh, form, uh, which 
from from this point comes the word chimera. So this looking at this uh, mysterious, uh, almost uh, uh, incredible creature. And plantarium is because I've imagined I've imagined Lantoneria as a sort of a kind of lab or observatory that was also remind to planetarium. So looking at how we can create this relationship with the local um, ecosystem, but think about also kind of more uh, globally. I think in terms of why we want to be involved as a school is it's an opportunity for our children to get out into their local environment and to really get to grips in terms of what does their local area look like and start to evaluate it and analyse it. Because um, for many of our children this is where they've born, this is where they've grown up and um, they spend a lot of time in this environment. Um, and part of the project was in terms of them going around looking at some of the flowers and plants that were growing but also looking that actually there's quite a lot of concrete, uh, a lot of buildings um, and yeah sort of a lot of those grey, black colours quite um, and how can we make that brighter, how can we uh, make that a more attractive environment for them and I think that really led into the project in terms of the mural. I think that the mural is amazing, it um, lights up the place and I like um, the shapes and uh, uh, it's basically it's not what you expect from an art piece, it's like it gives people different opinions of, of what they think and that's really good. I think it's a place um, that you can enjoy and you can feel happy and safe in and not get judged by your appearance or religion or anything. I noticed that um, the first time um, that was there, the mural was there, and people were work, walking by, by and looking at it, and they were amused by it in a, in a way. They were amused by it. They, were, they really did like it. Children from Mellors Primary School worked with artist Joe Wheeler to map the world on their doorstep in Radford. They discovered local histories and places and explored themes of home, work, play, shopping and worship. As part of their research, they interviewed each other, collected stories from family members, visited local businesses. In summer 2018, the children led a playful guided walk for the public to share their knowledge and their own experience of the neighbourhood. John Carroll Park, yeah. and I play here, and what we play is we play Dobby of Ground, and we jump on all the swings, and before she gets us, yeah. we have to be on that swing, and we have to be going round in a In 2018, artist Sam Metz worked with young people from Nottinghamshire Clubs for Young People through a series of workshops during the half-term holiday. Together, they explored local streets and experimented with mark-making, printing, mapping, sound, photography and projection. Using images developed through the workshops, Sam created a digital animation. This was designed to be layered with an analogue projection using cinefilm that had colour and pattern applied by participants. When This Tree Blossoms began in 2018 as part of a national project exploring how we can envisage positive futures in response to climate change and environmental change. The first event took place when artists Frank Abbott and Rachel Jacobs followed the blossoming of the cherry trees in Christchurch Gardens across the road from their studios at primary. They invited local people to meet together on Sunday the 22nd of April under the trees when they were in full blossom to talk about the future. The project has continued with the annual invitation, when this tree blossoms, we will meet here to talk about the future. Okay, Rachel, operate the machine.
The idea of the Making Place exhibition was always to create a space where we could reflect on projects from the past, but also invite people in to have conversations about the future. Given the impact of the pandemic, our experience of public spaces and green spaces in the city has really changed. And it feels more important than ever to find different ways of doing things, new ways of getting together, and for communities to have a say in what happens to their neighbourhoods.